Okay, folks, I'm back with my good friend, uh, Grant Peckford. Uh, Grant is the, and I gotta get this straight, he's the executive director of Georgina Arts and Culture. It's a long term, I, I rarely get it right, so excuse me. He's also a life skills coach and educator, but um, really if there's a claim to fame, it's that he's just a nice guy. <laughs> he's outspoken, that's a claim to fame. Uh, and he owns who he is. Hi, Grant. Hello, thank you so much. And it's the Georgina Center for Arts and Culture, just to be specific. Okay, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, I'm gonna have to excuse myself. I have a holes in my mouth because I'm getting over a cold. The bandwidth may be a little wonky, but I think we'll stay connected. Um, Grant got in touch with me last week because I had posted uh, something on sexual abuse on my Facebook page. And he felt compelled to get in touch with me uh, and asked if we can address it in this kind of um, video. And I love the guy. How am I going to say no to that? Um, but what was curious for me is... <laughs> why it resonated for you? What did it trigger, Grant? Why, why are we here today? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, we're here today because you did an amazing job um, with that conversation about my coming out story. And that got a lot of attention. So I felt very, very comfortable. So let's be clear that, um, you know, this is a difficult conversation and I'm making myself very vulnerable. So it needs to be with someone that I trust. So thank you. We've got we're, that. We're stuck. Out of Much. We're um, stuck. I I think it's you know there were several things in 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 the post. Part of it was you know individuals who carry guilt and blame when they are the victim, um, and misplaced love or the lack thereof in in their uh, relationships with their family or caregivers, whatever that may look like. Um, and I just started, you know, reliving, but, but I mean, we know what a drama queen I can be. So not reliving that. I mean, this experience for me began at the age of nine. So, th um, so this is so personal not, for you. This is personal for you. Very, very much so. But again, it's, you know, how we manage those pieces, um, you know, how long we sit in that. And, and, and what that journey to, dare, dare I say, recovery, for me, it wasn't recovery, it was having an understanding of why that all happened and finding a way to just come to grips with it and place it where it needed to be. I think I, that's I don't a great definition of recovery, actually. Well, yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, you know, you can't be a victim all your life. And I will get beaten up for this, but at some point in time, you just put your poop where it needs to go and get on with your life. And as I said to you off camera, I did not realize that I was a victim of child sexual abuse until I was in my early twenties and someone told me that that's what just, happened. Just before we go there. Okay. Um, I, I put our poop behind us. We're so cautious about our language on air. Put our, our crap behind us. Um, I, I want our listeners to know that you do that from a perspective that it's achieved once we have an understanding. Yes. That's when we're able to yes. um, integrate it into our lives, yet not have it uh, pull the strings of our life any longer. Yes, and if and if I may say like anything, and I use this a lot in the life skills, you do not get there one moment before you're ready to. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that. You know, there isn't some magic formula. You don't go to see a therapist or a psychiatrist or a counselor until you're ready to begin that conversation. Just saying. So I think... And it takes you know, years and years yeah. and years. And is this conversation with you perhaps the thinly veiled, like I, you know? 
So why you, did you, that? Why was why was your post a trigger for me? You were about I I cut you off, took you a little sideways because I want to clarify that. Yeah. I want to bring you back. Um, you didn't know you were sexually abused until somebody had told you so. No, I I I didn't. Um, and again, we said this off camera, and we might as well put it out there now. Let me tell you, at times I worked that to my advantage. I was a poor kid, wrong side. Yeah, yes. Cigarettes, booze, money. I was raised by a single mom. We did not have a thing. I know what it is to be hungry. I know the holes in the shoes. I know the three floor walk up. I mean, it's um, so. You know, there was that very practical side of it, which doesn't make me any less a, a victim, if you will. But, you know, to suggest for one moment, while I couldn't grasp necessarily what was actually going on, it was that act got me this. You, you, you were talking to me about a circumstance that can give rise to your exploitation beyond your awareness and appreciation yes. in the moment. Thank you. And so you're participating in it without, without, without appreciating someone is, a, is preying upon you. Yes, yes. Well, because, you know, what price do we pay to get what we need? Wow. Yeah, well, let's, really use, those, let's use those vulnerabilities and it's through the vulnerabilities that people do get exploited. I yes. want people to understand that because they feel shame, they blame themselves because they may have, yet some people, they may have uh, um, participated in a sense, there was an exchange of goods and services in a sense, it still doesn't make you to blame. You were still no. exploited for your vulnerabilities that at that age, you can't appreciate, you don't understand. You just, want some attention you want to feel loved and i'm not saying my mom didn't love me but she was a child raising a child so let's be really clear about that you've got a, an 18 year old giving birth who isn't given a manual before she leaves the hospital and she you know couldn't find her behind with both hands herself so you know you've got parents who are doing the best that they can, or alternatively, and we spoke about this, if you're in a, in a household that is violent, um, you just want some peace and some calm, and to be somewhere where you don't have to be part of that. Because oftentimes, because I experienced that as a teenager with my stepfather, sometimes you're blaming yourself for that as well. So that's a whole other, you know, 20 minute conversation. I look, I, I am so appreciate appreciative that you're contextualizing the circumstance in which an ongoing abuse and exploitation can continue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're not looking to blame our parents. No. We're, we're explaining contextually. The other thing that really resonated with me is that you didn't know you were sexually abused until you were told. I, I'm, I'm, a I bright, am, I'm a bright boy, Gary. <laughs> I don't, like, I'm in the position where I am frequently the first person to convey and to have somebody hear that was sexual abuse. Yes. I don't care what you may have done. I don't care how you may have participated. I don't social context aside, you were exploited for vulnerabilities and held hostage within an inappropriate relationship. And as that child, it is all above your pay grade. It's beyond yeah. your awareness and understanding. You cannot, cannot, as much as you may think, you cannot be complicit. No. You were, no. You were taken advantage of. Yes, yes. I mean- And, and there you know, in, there are in mm -hmm. is, Please, you may still feel shame, but you are not shamed. You are not no. blamed. No. That person owns it. Yes. Yes. 
And, 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 you know, Gary, it's that that's a tough place to get to sometimes. Yes. Uh, depending on what you've done on, on that journey um, to recovery, not, not to sound like a clinician or healthcare practitioner. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I think of the word shame and, and what I, what I recall, um, I don't think I felt shame until I was older and shame. I'm not going to say shame. I was, I, I was ashamed. I was disappointed in myself that I didn't speak up. But again, to go back to the earlier point of the point you just made is it was an exchange of goods and services. I love that because that is so me. <laughs> that is, you know, and I'm nine, you know, nine, ten, you know, and and viewers, just let's be really, really clear. The fact that I was a child and am and a survivor of child sexual abuse did not make me gay. What? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying, well, let me ask you directly. What's the connection between being gay and sexual abuse? None. Right. Oh, no, ever. What okay. a talk. And, and if you're hearing it here first, folks, so be it. There isn't a connection. So please don't don't even go there with us. You know, I, I think there is enough there, there is enough to deal with, you know, when you're ready to sit in that and figure it out without adding that other layer to it. I you know, to understand as best you can what you actually experienced and how that all happened is enough. <laughs> without adding that other layer. Because that, you know, there was, I mean, for me, I will speak for me, there was never any question in my mind where my attraction lay um, as much as I fought that for a large part of my life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we talked about this before, there's not some switch you turn on and off. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know I, what I will say, Gary, I think is really key, and, and I'm sure you would agree, is that can, that experience can certainly create confusion, unrest, you know, can yeah, open okay. up a whole That's fair. That's fair. That's other fair. things. That's fair. But to suggest for one moment, that I am now at 65 years of age after 33 years with the same man that I am gay because, you know, the neighborhood postman, I mean, would just be laughable for me. It would just be laughable. So, you know, I just, I think it is just so key to, you know, is it, is it bad for a young child to just want to be loved? You know, is it bad for a young hang, child? Hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on a second. Okay. Is it bad for a young child to just want to be loved? Let, let, let's bring us to a, a close there because okay. at, at the end of the day, that's what we need. We want that young child to be loved. Yes. And the degree to which we love and protect that young child, they grow up feeling secure and trusting. And I think um, given your experience, that was a tough place to get to. And I know that I've taken us all over the map in this conversation, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, well, I, I love you. I love that you are now at a place where you can own all these parts of yourself. So it's yes. integrated. Oh I love that you're authentic. I love that you're transparent. I love that we can talk about this. I love that I can call you a friend. Likewise. And, and if we're going to use the, the R word, recovery, I don't know if it's recovery, but what... 
that's where we want all persons to be. Uh, and best case scenario, it starts from the beginning. All of us yes, want I, to be loved. Yes, and I, and I do think if I can just say that recovery does not look the same for everyone. And it's not linear. It's... Oh, well, as we said, and I don't want to drag this on, but, you know, at the beginning, when we first started the conversation, what in that post was the trigger? Why did I feel the need to speak out? I mean, other than I'm outspoken. So, you know, is it still maybe a little as I'm 65 and retiring, maybe now I'm reflecting and, you know, as you write the next chapter, maybe some things still aren't quite put to bed. An ongoing process. Grant Peckford, uh, Gary. I, I do love you. I, I am so appreciative that you reached out to me. It speaks to some trust between us as well. Very. Um, we're going to post this. Hopefully, yeah. people, I'm a social worker. Grant is a life skills coach. Um, we're available. Uh, please share this. If you yes. found anything of value in it, share it for somebody else. And if it, some of it didn't make sense, please reach out to me. More than happy to bring clarity to my all over the place conversation. You'll find him on the internet. Just Google his yes. name. You'll find him. Yeah. All the best, Gary, Grant. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Take care, my love. Bye-bye.